Board members with Hollywood's top unions will meet over the weekend to decide whether or not to approve a plan to merge. The deal is between the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. This follows last week's tentative pact by the Group for One Union, made up of leaders from both sides, to form a single entity. The merger promises to strengthen union membership, but not everyone thinks that bigger is better. FSRN's Leilani Albano has the story. If passed, the merger would combine 70,000 journalists, broadcasters, disc jockeys, singers, and dancers from the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, or AFTRA, and 125,000 members of the Screen Actors Guild, or SAG, making it the largest entertainment union in Hollywood. SAG members are expected to ratify the merger agreement, ending a long-standing rift with AFTRA over differing bargaining strategies and philosophies. The union's efforts to unite reflect a growing consensus in Hollywood that a merger is needed in order to bargain with powerful media companies. SAG member Christian Mioli. With the idea of SAG and AFTRA coming together as one. There is more of a sense that we will have a stronger representation against a powerful producer base, which is backed by multi conglomerates, who really could care less about the local actor. The merger comes during a time of serious economic turmoil for SAG members. While unemployment rates among union members have always been unusually high, entertainment jobs have been harder to come by thanks to the ailing economy and reality television taking over much of the airwaves. Muffy Sunday is a member of the Communications Workers of America and an organizer with the Freedom Socialist Party. They're desperate for jobs and. They are prob- probably being convinced that this is a way that they will unite and then organize reality TV. The unions could not be reached for an on air comment. However, in a statement, the presidents of SAG and AFTRA said the merger is something to be proud of. But not all SAG members support the deal, including Alexis k i l e I just, I really hope it does not go through. She says it's unfair that AFTRA members are not required to meet the same stringent requirements as SAG members to become part of the union. It's bombarding SAG with people who really don't take acting as serious as SAG members do. According to the SAG website, the proposal includes a blueprint for a membership constitution, governing structure, and a dues plan for workers. However, no other details were included. That has left Kylie with lingering questions. But a number one、uh, for most SAG members is the pensions. What's going to happen to the actors that have vested time、um, you know, into their pensions? Does it freeze when, when the AFTRA members come into SAG? Is that going to freeze and then they're going to have to start all over again? It's a bit scary when it's on known charted land. Communications Workers of America member Sunday agrees and says a lack of transparency raises concerns about the contract. You would think that in a big thing like this, you'd get a sheet of paper that says, We've prepared an argument. This is yes and no, and let you decide. If there's not even that in there, on what basis would a member vote yes? This isn't the first time that the unions tried to merge. There were attempts to combine SAG and AFTRA in 2003, but SAG members voted against it. Sunday says their relationship worsened in 2008. That's when AFTRA ended its decades long bargaining partnership with SAG and negotiated separate primetime contracts with the Producers Association, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. AFTRA walked out with no warning and Declared that they were open for business to negotiate with management and signed what I would consider a sweetheart agreement,、uh, including none of the protections that were being asked for in negotiations, and of course was rewarded with lots of contracts for new TV, TV shows. That deal had an impact, says SAG member Mioli, one which led to a major downturn in wages and benefits for SAG members. For a majority of people, it became a bit more difficult、um, over the last few years. Making a living in show business. The 2008 agreement may have riled SAG members, but it also sparked talks with AFTRA to form a single union as a way to increase its negotiating clout. There's power in numbers. When we can come to the table, the negotiating table, as one union, we will have a stronger say. But Sunday thinks differently. 
She says it will take mass organizing and not just big numbers for the two unions to negotiate a winning contract. So I think it's not so much whether the union is big or if it is merged, it's whether or not it is willing to fight. And if it's not, it doesn't, you can be as big as you want and you're not going to fight. Members from SAG and AFTRA are expected to vote on the merger plan sometime in April. The merger will take effect only if 60 percent of those who vote support the measure. Leilani Albano, FSRN, Los Angeles.